Hi everyone, uh, this demo is going to be about auto painting in Corel Painter. I have the 2023 version, so it's rather extensive. Now just what you would use auto painter for is, if you're considering this particular program, then depending on how much freehand skills or experience you have, uh, this may very well help you getting started with this type of program uh, just to be able to convert your photographs into paintings or even if you have freehand or any type of experience uh, with painting you could also use this just to give yourself a rough idea what a photograph could look like in a painted form uh, so with that in mind uh, we're going to go through three different photographs i have here now keep in mind these are rather large photographs. This one is 46 by 20 and the other two we're going to use is 48 by 24 and they're all at 300 dpi. Now those are rather large photographs and the detail in them is uh, pretty strong uh, but I use those for photographic reasons also. Now what we're going to do is just go through all the tools and we're going to do a real general setup. Now there is a different setup you could use, but we're not gonna do that. And what I mean by that is if I go up here and hit file, I can hit quick clone or clone right here, and that sets everything up for you. What we're gonna do is do it manually so you can have more complete control over what your painting will come out like. And just to be able to do as much manual painting as you can or want to, throughout the entire time you're painting your photograph. So let's get started. Okay, let's go over where the tools are, just so you know where to find them, and that is the panels that we'll be using. Now keep in mind, layout of Corel Painter is very uh, in-depth also. You could set everything up any way you want, and that is well worth a demo in itself. Uh, there are plenty out there. Now, this is just the way I have everything set up, how I'm going to use it, because I think I'm going to do this to some of my photographs just to see what kind of end result I get. Now, to find what ones we're looking for, we go up to Window. Now, here is one of them right here, the Clone Source. That would be over here. And then the Auto Painting is also there. And then to find some of the other ones we'll be working with right here under Photo Art Panels, then Under Painting, auto painting and the restoration is the ones we will look at and the AI style that creates a painting for you but the look that it gives you is pretty much the same and you have very little control over what it ends up looking like compared to what we're going to do and then the other one would be right here under uh, the uh, brush control panels and then uh, go underneath the uh, brush shapes under brush media and that would be right here clone color clone method and that's all you would need uh, for this particular uh, look now once you have those up now here's the ones right here now these i don't use very much now the underpainting panel this one is just if you want to adjust your photograph before you start painting it because keep in mind when we start uh, setting everything up it's going to paint from your photograph however it is so if you want to adjust it lighter darker more color less color however you want it to look that's what your painting is going to come out like so in other words just say for example if I zoom in on this photograph and I'll show you just like say for example this big pine tree here it's pretty sharp now navigator I'll take it all the way up to 100 percent and you could still see it's it's very sharp as far as the photograph goes so if i wanted to soften this a little bit i could take up my smart blur all the way up to 100 because it's a big photo it will take a couple seconds to generate this filter but once it does i will get a smart blur on my photograph that will soften everything up just like now and then this way if i want to take some of the detail out it is actually only uh, diffusing certain areas and leaving other areas sharp. So depending on what effect you want, 
that's a starting point you could consider or a filter you could consider that you could see some of the areas are a little bit sharp other areas are real soft and running together now I'll take that all the way back down and then we will reset that and then if I actually use also now that I'm back where I was if I change my values or anything else then I will get a completely different look again and this in fact I will actually take it back out now that's what the photograph would look like now if I want really a dramatic effect whether it be lighting or what have you if I don't want it that dramatic take it up a little bit closer to zero and then it will lighten up but still give me some dark areas depending on where I want now again you could adjust your photograph any way you want uh, before you start painting if you use the saturation or hue saturation will obviously take color out the hue will change your values now this is a fairly red-ish purple-ish painting to begin with now if I take it down in hue and get negative then I'm gonna really get uh, a snappy purple and uh, pretty much almost like a, uh, a cerulean blue look to it uh, that would be a very interesting painting uh, once it was done so depending on what kind of look you want uh, you could adjust your photograph before you start that would be underpainting now we're going to reset it for me I'm just going to use my photographs just as they are and then we will go from there now the clone method uh, that is if you want tinting and uh, different reference points to clone from we're not going to get into that with this particular uh, demo but the one thing I do want to show you is on clone color we want to make sure enable clone color is checked because that is up here this color palette if I click this clone tool right here I either go back to just straight colors any color I want or if I click on this then I'm only taking the colors from my source and I will get into that here shortly and then the restoration uh, that is giving you the opportunity to use a clone brush and if you want to uh, reduce the painting effect and go back a little bit to your original photograph you can do that but we're going to do that manually now the first thing we will do is set up our source and that is right here the clone source now what we're going to do is just copy this photograph exactly the way it is and make a painting out of it this will be our first one keep in mind we got two more photographs to do and they will all each be different to just try different things for each one now when we set up a clone source we do not want a current pattern and when I click on this I don't want a texture that's the textures that are built in or you can import your own but what I do want is an embedded image and it'll give me this particular uh, pop-up menu and I could either browse for one or what I actually want to do is just click the current document and that's this right here the 46 by 20 and that is okay and that's it now that is all now what I'll do is anything that I paint from it's just going to be duplicating that uh, photograph onto this photograph now what I may also want to do is work in layers because we could do each one of these painting strokes and different brushes on different layers and then you could combine them uh, just as such like uh, you would actually do in any other type of painting so what I'll do is I'll create a new layer down here and that is it and we'll work on this layer and we'll keep our original here because then keep in mind we could duplicate that over and put a mask over it and put it as the top layer and then even bring back some of the original photograph that way also but keep in mind there is an endless amount of things we could do now these two up here show source image and then also toggle tracing paper we won't need those two for this particular uh, photograph because we're just duplicating it as it is if I hit show source image it's just going to bring up the photograph of the exact same thing since we're using it just as it is but now if I toggle the tracing paper what that does is if you want to take a different photograph 
from completely different and superimpose it on here somewhere, then you'll be able to hit the tracing paper and it will show you where it would come out. That is what we're going to do in the very last one because we're going to be combining images onto a, a given uh, photograph that is completely separate from what we're going to do is add about uh, six different images together. Okay, now with all that said, we could get started, but first we're going to look at some brush strokes and given strokes as to what we could use and just to see how we can actually get started with the auto painting. Okay, let's go into auto painting itself. Now, uh, just a real quick rundown. These are the brushes I normally use uh, for just photo clone and what have you. These are the cloning brushes. I could use for also photographs and different things because of how many different things I do. I, I keep all my brushes set up for whatever I'm doing at the time. Now, if I go just quickly uh, to the original painter set of 2023 brushes, uh, there is a quite a few brushes. Uh, these are the cloner brushes here. You could use those. And then the uh, uh, right here, the smart stroke brushes. These are also the ones they would uh, actually recommend uh, that when we go to auto painting up here then this is the smart stroke painting right here and this is the smart settings which are these settings right here now if you don't use the smart settings then you would be using any of these settings you could change over and when it comes to all of the different ways you could adjust a brush uh, there is quite a few different ways the angle angle jitter opacity opacity jitter all of those different things will apply that if you start manipulating any of your brushes that you're using, if you want a different effect, then just say, for example, if you go to blending and you want to actually uh, dry it out, or if you want to just say, for example, if I pick a brush here, uh, and then now if I uh, go to blending and if I want brush loading, then what that would do is actually pick up more of the existing color and blend it. Uh, and then the uh, dry out to transparency, it would fade off to nothing. But then this would determine how long of a stroke I would have before it would dry out. So now just keep in mind that when I say you could do this, even though it's painting for you, you are adjusting all of the brushes and the brush strokes of how they will look and them built up on top of each other will give you some very unique looks once you're finally done. Now, what I can also then do is just show you quickly. If we go up to uh, right here, uh, just brushes, then you could also even record a stroke and then save it, which is also right here in your auto paint. If I click this, then I could go to record stroke and then save that stroke. Now, if I record it, then what I'll do is if I make a stroke here and just say, for example, that's my stroke right there. You can barely see it, but then if I save it, oh, you know what? Let's make it a little bit bigger. We'll go to 100. Now, here's my stroke right there. And then if I save that right here, save stroke, then now I could just say uh, test and save that. Now it will come up in the long drop down menu here, which there is my test right there. So if I click on it, now I will be using that brush stroke I just made. And if I use the smart stroke painting, what it will do is it will stay with the contours of your photograph. It will follow the lines of your photograph, uh, which is downright great. Now, let's say, for example, what I'm going to do is we'll just delete this layer out and create a new layer. And then what I want to show you is first I'll take it back out and we'll bring up our color palette. Make sure that's clicked on this control right here. This option is the clone color option. Uh, this one is important in your color palette. Uh, this is the option that controls the color, whether it comes from your source image, which is this photo right here, or the actual uh, color wheel that I could then choose any color I want. But if I click on this, 
and it goes to the black and white values that I know whenever I set my source image, which will be this photo, then that's where the colors are coming from. But now we could experiment with this a little bit later because if I go back to just the traditional colors of any one I want to choose, then I could even take, just for example, a, a, a bold uh, cobalt turquoise or something and splash it around here and there and then let it do that and paint it. But then depending on how I have my brushes set, the blending modes and the opacity will determine how bold that cobalt turquoise will be. I created a heavy buildup brush. Even if you want to use thicker oils, I don't uh, just for the sake of not having any artificial shadows from the thick paint. Now, if I want to do that though, what I can do is I pick this brush right here, build up oil. Now I'm going to put on smart stroke painting, but then I'm also going to hit smart, uh, smart settings. Now what that will do is actually start off with a much heavier brush, but then what it'll also do is slowly reduce the size of the brush as it goes down. So if you want a little wee bit of a mix up of the brush size uh, you could do that and then if i hit play we're just going to do this in real time it will evaluate the brush directions and then it's going to start off real big strokes and again this is the brush i picked and so now keep in mind it's going to actually uh, build up different brush strokes starting off real big and then the brush strokes will go down uh decrease in size as it goes and we'll just give it some time again i'll just leave this go in real time you could fast forward if you want uh, but this will give you a good idea just how this particular uh setting works of the smart settings that if i want to start off now keep in mind if i just clicked off the start a smart setting i'm sorry the smart setting right here then i just had the smart stroke painting the smart stroke painting is what follows the contours of your photograph the the smart settings when you first start off that's what will give you a good idea as to starting off with a, a larger stroke and then going now it's going smaller and smaller which will bring out more and more detail but now keep in mind, depending on how smudged this is or how much it looks, is going to depend a lot on how we have that particular brush setting. So if it's coming out a little wee bit uh, smudged to a certain extent, then I may have the uh, brush load pick up. So in other words, it's going to be picking up a lot of color that's already put down. And then depending on the bleed and the saturation, uh, then what it will do is the... Uh, brush itself uh, may not get to full color uh, of opacity of the color it's using it will be diffused by the color under it now it's slowly starting to shape up but again this is a heavy brush so if you want to build up uh, as far as making it look like a, a thick oil painting you can also do that but we're just going to leave it run here and what it's doing is it's just slowly building up from our photograph that is the exact same photograph you see but i'm actually doing it on a separate layer so we keep our photograph intact but then also i can manipulate these layers any way i want to if i want to go to a different brush and then start painting with it i could even do it on a separate layer because it's still going to pick up the paint from the layer underneath it but then what it will also do is give me the opportunity to experiment with uh, even as far as uh, just a blending modes between layers. Uh, or if I only want to go a little ways on one layer with one style of brush, but then let the other style of brush come through from the layer below it. So again, you have an endless amount of options that you could do uh, to change the look. Now, it's done. If I enlarge it, we could see that it, it made quite a few different brush strokes and it did build up. Now, I only used a oily brush that was uh, meant to be able to use on any type of layer. There are thicker brushes that you have to use a specific layer down here for the thick paint. 
Uh, but this is uh, just to give you a rough idea what you could do. And uh, again, uh, keep in mind, because this uh, photograph is so big, uh, it's a little bit more difficult unless I zoom way in uh, to actually see the buildup of paint. But now, say for example, if I want to then, uh, I can even turn this layer off and we'll build a new layer. But now if I go to a different brush, we use this brush right here to build up oil. Now if I go to this rough oil, this one is flat with no impasto buildup. Now if I do the same thing, I'll leave the smart setting on, the smart stroke painting, and hit play again. It will evaluate the brush directions. But this one is going to be a little bit different only because of the way the brush setting is with this one. And then you can see it's also going much quicker. And what it will do is uh, slowly decrease in paint size, but it will give us a start if you want that as uh, just a, a first layer of painting, so to speak, just to start building up uh, whatever you want to end up with. In other words, whether you want more or less detail, uh, and then you could change things as they go. Now we'll wait till it's finished here. It won't be too long at all. This first painting I will do in real time, but the uh, the second and third painting, I'll explain what I'm going to do, but we'll just do it as a speed painting. Now that's it, it's done. And you can see the different look. It pretty much, in this particular case, kept my uh, painting pretty well intact. I should say my photograph and just the way it built up you can see the hints of the pine trees and everything but now just say for example i have it set at 100 if i go over here these are just my brush sizes here that i could just click on a 20 and get a 20 and then if i take off the smart setting and then hit a play again now i'll only be using a size 20 and that's it so once it starts placing these down if I leave it go for a while, because it's a much smaller brush, then I'm going to start refining my detail more and more. But now keep in mind, I can also use a selected area. So if I only want detail in some of these pine trees or certain areas, I could select off that area, even from the original photograph, and then it will only be painting within that area. But now because I dropped down the size of the brush, you could see it's starting to refine the detail a little bit more and bring out more specific trees depending on how I want it. Again, this is a size 20 and it's only going to be relevant to the size of the, of the painting itself because again, uh, this is a pretty big canvas which is again 46 by 20, 300 DPI uh, is a rather sizable one. Now I could just keep on leaving this go for a while here and then we will stop it just to see what it looks like. And you can see it's refining this particular pine tree uh, more and more. But it, it, it has a, a pretty nice uh, daub painting effect to it. And the, the colors and everything are working well. But again, depending on how I have this brush set uh, with the blend modes and everything else are going to determine how much paint it picks up previously and then how it's laying it down, and then the stroke itself. Let's stop it there, and I'll zoom out to see. And then here's our painting now, which is kind of interesting. It's not too much different than the photograph itself. If I turn this off, there's the original photograph. Now if I turn this on, you can see it's a painting, but it kept the detail pretty well. Now if I go all the way in, then you can see the real small dabs of paint and right now we're at 134 percent and you can see what what how much detail there actually is uh in the photograph and painting itself that it pulled out and then again these real sharp gobs of red are just the uh, blueberry leaves that it was picking out as it touched down so there we can consider that one and we could just leave this one go if you want to just look painted and that's it. But we'll get a little bit more creative on this second one. And we'll save this one just as it is. And that's, again, only with one brush. And we left to go with a couple of different sizes. 
and this is what we got as an end result. So if we scan around this particular painting, then we could see what it did with the clouds. And then again, now, if some of these edges are too hard for you, if you want to blend some of them in, then you could go back to a blender brush and do it manually and, and just soften up some of these edges or uh, reduce some of these, whatever you want. We'll do that in a second and third one. But again, this is just a start of where we could start from, uh, manually manipulate it ourselves. Let's save this one where it's at and go on to the second one. Okay, let's go on to our second one. This one is the 48 by 24. And again, this photograph doesn't look too bad just the way it is as far as uh, being considered for a painting. It has some atmosphere, interesting texture and colors. We'll leave it as is. And then what we will do is go back, same thing. Uh, we will hit our drop down and we want to embed the exact same image. But we're going to make this one a little bit more painterly. We'll use a palette knife and a couple other things uh, just to, uh, for lack of better words, distort the photograph a little bit more. And I will create a new layer. And again, as long as you keep on working on layers, then if you get an effect you don't like, or if a brush size is too big, too small, then you could just turn off that layer and, and ignore it altogether. Uh, but then also keep in mind, if you don't leave the brush again, play through the whole entire photograph, in other words, to cover up the entire photograph, then you may want to even build uh, different brush strokes on top of each other. But we're going to try this one. We will go to, uh, let's go even into a rough knife right away. And what we'll do though, is we'll do the same thing. We'll go to auto painting. And then what we're going to do is we're going to leave these two both checked, smart stroke, and then uh, the smart settings. And again, it'll start off with a bigger knife and then go small as it paints. But this one is going to be uh, reasonably looser and more painterly than the last one. Now you can see how much it's distorting now, but it'll still pull out the same colors from the photograph. But then as we leave it go, it will decrease in size and we'll leave it go for a while. And then if we want to pull back some of the detail after it's done, then we could go to different brushes and uh, different sizes. Okay, even though it's not done yet, we'll stop it there that's looking pretty interesting we'll zoom in and then you could see how many crisscrossed gobs of paint there are just to make up what you see now you could even leave it this loose if you want but what we could do then is go back in with different brushes and what we'll do is create another layer just so we keep this one intact and keep it where it's at because then we can also change brushes with new layers anytime we want. But we'll keep what we got here because this is interesting. And I doubt if you'll ever be able to duplicate the exact same thing. So just like freehand, it'd be a good idea to keep what you got so far. Now let's go to a different brush. Uh, let's try even the, this one right here, Sponge Fetty. Now this one is still fairly loose, but we're going to drop it down in size and then we're going to turn off the smart settings. So in other words, it's not going to start big and then go small. We'll just use one particular size and that's it. But we're going to drop this down to uh, just say about a 50, which is fairly small and we'll play it for a while. We'll watch up close what it does just to see how it's going to change the look of what we already have. You can see it's tightening everything up just a little bit. Let's stop that one right there. And that's looking interesting itself. But then if we want some different knife strokes right here, if we add this one now, we're going to add another layer. We're going to pick this one right here. And then now if we use this one, 
It is a 100. Yeah, we'll leave it at 100. Start there. We'll play that. And now see what we get. This is going to create long strokes of a knife. But it will still follow the lines of your photograph. So in other words, you could see barely some of the strokes out here in the distance. What I'll do is I could even stop it and zoom in a little bit. You can see how it's knifing out some of the branches and it's making them uh, much more pronounced rather than uh, just uh, the uh, splotchy paintbrush that we already used. And it's putting in some details. We'll stop it there. And now we'll see what it's going to do. And now you can see some of these brush strokes, the knife strokes, how they're pretty long. And depending on how I have it set with the length along, let's even try even a little bit bigger one. We'll go up to 200. But we'll keep it zoomed in like this. And just to see what it does, we can also make sure we adjust the length. and Hit Smart Settings, hit Start, and we'll see what we get. But because we're on a separate layer, there's nothing going to be lost. I have the random turned up pretty high too, so that's what it's also adjusting the strokes in between. You can see this one right here just made. And it's really uh, changing things around. Just grabbing the local color from the photograph and applying it different directions. We'll leave it go for a little bit and then zoom out and see what we got. But the way it's following the edges of the trees and some of the smaller branches, it's rather interesting how it's defining uh, the darker shapes within the picture. And again, uh, depending on what sequence of brushes you use, how many layers you use, you'll very seldom ever end up with the exact same thing. So if you see a painting you like from one of your own photographs, you better save it as is just to be sure. Okay, we're going to stop it there. Yeah, let's stop it there. And then we'll zoom out. Now you can see it's it's pretty painterly. It has some uh, brush strokes here and there. Uh, and then it has some knife marks uh, defining certain lines and areas, uh, which is rather interesting. But again, if I actually now uh, looked at this, you could probably do a better job than I could painting something like this. Okay, now what we could do then is just for example, if I turn all these off just to get back to the original one, these roots right in here, just say for example, if I want to bring out something with a little bit more detail, then I would go to my final accent brushes. Now these brushes I did all for just this auto painting. And if I go to this particular brush, I have it set real light, only 25% opacity. I'll increase the size a little bit, but if I go bit with my pen now and go back over it, what I'm going to end up doing is start bringing out the detail of the original photo and I'm painting over it with a particle brush. And what I'll end up doing is refining this particular area back to detail if I want to put an emphasis on it. And what it'll do is slowly diffuse some of those brush strokes and bring out more detail of what it's going to look like. And then that way, if I want to refine certain areas, uh, just to put like a focal point of, of detail within the painting, it would almost be like uh, sharp edges in a loose watercolor, so to speak, that the hard edges and the detail will definitely grab your eye uh, compared to the loose splotchy paint. Just like this right in here. If I keep going with it, what it's doing is I'm actually drawing from the photograph, but I'm putting the detail back in. And you can see how it's, it's slowly sharpening up. I'm just taking down a little bit at a time. 
And then now, since that's sharp again, uh, what I could do is sharpen it up and then quit whenever I want. But even like, say for example, if I find another loose spot, even just, just to show you along the edge of the tree, I will end up bringing back the tree. And that is what I'm putting down because I'm turning off all of the layers below it, but it is not changing. So what I'm actually doing is painting on top of all of these layers and, and readjusting the, the amount of detail, especially down here in this root, uh, I could bring back some detail if I want. Uh, for example, just same thing right here. I'll splash in some detail again. And what it's going to do is bring back the way the original tree looks. Uh, we'll put it over here. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can see what's going on. Now you can see this is almost back to the original photo. Even like say for example, look at these little weeds here and twigs and twigs and branches. I can bring that back. Now this little stroke right here from the palette knife, if I want to take that out, now I'm going back to the actual edge of the tree. So this is just to give you a rough idea. And you can see how many different brush strokes are very subtle in value changes and what they're doing. Here's a, a smaller tree here. If I start bringing back some of those small twigs, then I could add detail where I want uh, to create a focal point. And this is what I, I could do in this one. There's a real nice long palette stroke there, palette knife stroke. But uh, this one, let's zoom out, see what we got. We can leave this one pretty much right where it's at too. But this is just to give you ideas of uh, how much, uh, whether it be how tight or how loose you want to leave the painting. That is going to depend on your brushes. Before we save this one as is, let's go back and revisit uh, our custom colors that we uh, discussed in the first painting. And what I will do is just to show you how it worked. Now, if you're new to art or you're new to painting, I would recommend you doing this manually just to be able to place those colors where you want them and just to start plan on what color you may want and where you may want it and then how much also you may want. But if you want to do it auto painting, then I would uh, take the uh, selection tool. I'm going to take the uh, freehand polygon and then I'm going to just draw, just say the bottom of our painting where all the greens are. I'm going to go the whole way around and I'll select that area. So now I'll only be able to auto paint in this area. So then keep in mind, if you obviously want to make uh, multiple selected areas uh, just by using the plus sign uh, up here, right here, and add to the selection, then I could select the trees, uh, different areas, wherever I may want this new color to go. But if I go back and click on, just say, the build up oily brush, and, but now if I click on this clone control color, I will go back to my colors of a custom color and let's just say we want to use something like a, a burnt sienna color which would be about right about right in there and then now depending on how i have all my brush settings in here and that's all of them uh, whether it be the spacing the opacity the angle the stroke jitter uh, the blending abilities this will all play out how these brush strokes will look but now also if I want to click down here and pick up underlying colors, what we could do is make a new layer just in case we don't like what's going on here or we want to adjust it. I could pick up underlying colors and then now if I go back to my auto paint and play, this is what I will get. It's laying down burnt sienna colors here and there. And again, if it's doing it too fast for me, or uh, in anything in between, I could stop it there. I could cut back on the speed right here uh, of how fast it's doing it, if I don't want it to do too quick. But then also, we could change things up. Now what I did, now it's just laying down uh, just little gobs of burnt sienna here and there. 
but if I change the brush, I made this brush here just for this. And if I use it as a spot color, now what it is is the exact same brush as this, but I rearranged the brush controls quite a bit, whether it be staggering the brush stroke, uh, the blending modes, everything about it. And this is something you have to experiment with because keep in mind, these are the ones I use. And even when you start getting into color variability uh, and then also the color expression, I could change the hue, saturation, and value a little bit from the original color. All of those are going to play into what you're going to have now. So now if I hit play, it's going to change as far as I'm going to get more of a pure color, but then the color will also stagger because you can see some color going down right in here that's barely visible, uh, but then it's also getting pretty strong other places. If I stop that, go back to my other brush, and then we'll make it bigger. It's a 50 now. Let's go all the way up to uh, 100. And then hit play again. Now let's e eliminate what we already did. Just so we could see new effects. And now that it's a 100 size, here's what I'm getting now. And again, it will pick up some of the underlying colors. Because that's how I have it set. But it's a fairly short brush stroke. So now if I want to go by the uh, hit stop and if I want to go by the smart stroke painting, then it's going to follow my contours of the photograph and the lines of the photograph, but then also it will still do what it's been doing, but they will be a little bit more planned as to what the photograph looks like. So now it's it's planning a little bit more, but it's still taking that same burnt sienna and mixing it with the colors that are already there. So again, now if I want to stop that and then go maybe to uh, a little bit more of an easier color that we could see, like maybe like a deep purple. Let's call that right there. Now if I hit play, the purples and greens would really set off, but it's still going to be mixing with the greens and yellows and golds that are already there. And then now you can see how it's rearranging some things, and it's definitely going to make it painterly if that's what you're looking for. Now again, we could do this manually just by a brush over anything we use, but we can also have it done by the auto paint system. And again, it will change things around. And depending on what brush you use, these are the effects you'll get. If I go back to my uh, knife blender, uh, it was used at first, and it, it gave me some very unique colors and shapes and patterns. We zoom out a little bit, then you can see what it's doing. And again, we could stop it at any time we want, change the brush size, um, now that it's on a separate layer, I can even go back in and erase some of these. If I think some of the brush strokes have been chopped off by my selection area, I could go back in and just take those out completely or redo them manually. But again, the choices are all yours. If I undo that, and then now this is some of the very subtle burnt siennas that are left, uh, that changes the look of the painting quite a bit, just that single layer. Here is with a layer, here is without. So that even changed it quite a bit too. But again, using this particular control right here of picking up underlying color from the layers below, that makes a big difference. But now I kind of like this effect right here, uh, even without the purple. The purple is a little bit too much for me, but that's just me. But what I will do is uh, save this just as it is and we will move on to our final painting right now. Okay, let's move on to the final uh, painting from a photograph here. Uh, this one is just roughly the same area that the first image was, a uh, different time of the year, but I have a strong lighting coming from the left, and I'm going to use that for my advantage. Now, what I'm going to do is first I'll go ahead and uh, make this the source 
So I'll just embed this image here and this is just going to be the current document. I'll hit OK. Now that is ready to go already that we already have one source in here. Now we're going to create our second source. And what we're going to do is I'm just have my express keys here. I just hit place. Now I'm going to select these individual cutouts of, of uh, snow geese. I'm just going to put them anywhere because we're going to readjust them and arrange them a little bit here. And these were all cut out and I'll put up a link on how to cut out or even just select a given area or in this particular case a, a given subject. I'm doing this in real time, so please bear with me. Okay, now that we have these all done, but what we did now, though, was we put each one on a, its own layer. So what we could do then is manipulate and arrange it uh, rather easily. Now, if we keep this one out here, we'll close this up. We keep this one out here. We'll resize it, and we're going to convert it to a typical layer. And we'll go with that right there and enter that. So we'll have three over here, two over here, five all together. And just how those are now, uh, these guys would be much higher if they were in flight uh, migrating. But we'll let it go at that. This is just to show you uh, how to match up the lighting with what lighting we have. And then just arrange a separate source of painting. So now what we're going to do is, if we're happy with where these are, then what we could do is grab all five layers, because each one is on its own layer. We're going to collapse those layers. Now all five of them are on one layer. So we can't move anything now. But then what we will do is turn off the canvas and save this as a separate PNG. We hit save. And we're going to go back to our original documents here. We'll go to the references. This is where I have everything saved. We're going to make this a PNG. There's our five separate geese. Now we'll put it in as group. And that is it. Now what we could do is... We're going to close this out. And this one we go, we'll just turn off for now. And then what we will do is turn on our canvas. Okay, now what I'll do is go back up to the source. And what I want to do is hit this folder right here. And click on it. And then what I'll do is get a browse right here. And then what I want to do is bring it up. That's this one right here and then go into where I saved it at inside my references that's this right here the group open it and now I have it set as a source too so now that PNG we just saved it is now a source but now if I hit toggle tracing it will show me where these geese are coming up on my painting and that's exactly where we put them just like that so if I hit show source image then all it's going to do is show me that PNG that we just saved in a separate uh, canvas panel. So now what we could do is go down here. Uh, we could uh, leave the uh, toggle tracing paper on or off. It wouldn't matter. Uh, and then what we will do, though, is go down here to the canvas. Uh, this one is just the layer where they were. That's uh, not going to mean anything now. So we could delete it, keep it, whatever. Uh, but then also we will go on to actually make a new layer and I'm going to start painting the background but what I need to do then is go to that source and since I'm going to paint the background first I'll click on my background source and then go to auto painting and I'm going to turn off the smart setting no you know what we'll do the same thing we'll start off with a brush let's uh, go with um, 
we can even go with a build up oily again and hit play and it'll start off with a big brush and decrease in size as it goes but we're on a different layer so it doesn't matter and we'll leave it do its thing Okay, there it stopped. Now you can see it's fairly loose. You can see uh, just some uh, makeouts of the boulders and, and some of the pine trees are just about completely lost because of how uh, smeary that brush stroke is. Uh, let's put in a little wee bit more detail. What I'll do is make another layer and then I'm going to go back to one of these uh, more detailed brushes. I'll go to a dab blend so it won't you lose too much of the uh, look we already have. And then I'm going to turn off the smart settings and then just hit play. And this is only a size 20. So we're going to start bringing back some of the detail a little bit. And you can see how loud. Now they're making the marks pretty loud compared to what we already have so what we'll do is we'll just stop it hit control z take all that out and then what we will actually do is take the opacity down even more and then let's check the blending we're going to dry it out even quicker Now you can see that they're not so loud. What we might do is also still increase the size. So I'll stop it, undo that. We're gonna take it up to about a 40. And let's see what we get there. We'll play that. And it's giving me a nice softer blend now too that they're not so loud, kind of like floating on their own layer, so to speak. It'd be nice to make them look like they were a part of the painting. We'll let this go for a little while. And again, since it's on its own layer, then keep in mind, I can even adjust the opacity of that particular layer if I think they're too loud, too bold, so to speak. But again, you have an endless amount of options how you could adjust things. But what it will start doing is pulling our pine tree back out if that's what we want. Now let's leave it there and we'll put our geese in just to see how they look compared to everything else. So what I'll do is I'll stop that. But then I'll go back to my clone source and now I'm going to select the group. And then now if I go back to uh, just a little bit of a tighter brush since these are smaller objects. Then what I'll do is create another layer and then hit play on the auto painting and let's put in our geese. We could stop it there and make the brush size just a little bit bigger. I'll go up to a 30, not even a 40 because we could always go backwards and put some detail back in. I'll show you what I mean. We'll play that. We'll stop it there and increase our brush size just a little bit. That would be right here. And we'll try that. Okay, let's stop it there. And even though I have some daylight in some of the geese, what I would do is go to my navigator and type in 62. And what that will do is show me what it looks like at print size. So if I move it around a little bit, now what I would do is now the geese are fairly loose, as you can see. But what I'll do then is go back to one of my more detailed brushes and then just go back in and paint that out, the daylight itself. 
But if I want to start bringing in some of the feathers back in, just like, say, for example, out here towards the edge, there they are. I'm taking a little wee bit out at a time. And there I just filled in that daylight. And if I want to make the head look more like a goose head, and again, we're just doing this by hand. And like, say, for example, right here, you could barely see now, I'm just starting to put in some of the subtle individual feathers. And then these black ones here, how I brought that back out. And I would do that to each and every goose just to keep a painterly look to it, but enough detail to make it look like what it's supposed to. Same thing with this one. We'll just go over it quickly. I'll fill that back in just like that. Again, I'm trying to take down just a little bit at a time so I don't lose the effect I already have. And then we could keep this as black or lacking detail as much as we want. Stop any time. If I want to soften up some of those brush strokes, I can do that. We can bring out the head of this one a little bit more. And again, where these individual feathers are, all I'm doing is putting back the original photograph that we worked from as the source. And since this is nice and illuminated backlit feathers, we can put those back in. And same thing with down here with this one though. Put the head back in. Some of the individual feathers here. And then see, I could bring those tips out. But it may not catch. And then if we want to kill the daylight, we could do that. And this is what it would look like at printed size. Because this, again, is a pretty big, sizable image. But then you can see now the swirls of the paint and everything that I had going on with the linear patterns. I'll put these feathers back in and just go with it right way it is. Now this one we could bring out there a little bit. If that's too much I could undo. But I'll leave it the way it is. And then we'll bring out some of these feathers under this wing just to make the appearance of detail. Get rid of that daylight and then make this one a little bit more pronounced that it's overlapping this one. Put these feathers back in. And then we could put this face back in just a little bit like that. And define this individual wing just a little bit more. We'll leave some of the rough paint there. But because this is on its own layer, again, I could even take an eraser and go around this edge and, and get rid of some of that jagged edge if I wanted to or if I needed to. And then that's it. And then this is what it would look like. And then again, same thing. If I want to bring out some of the pine trees, I could do that. But you could see the way the paint is swirled up. It's fairly loose. And then let's... Put it to size, shrink it down just a little bit so it all fits. And there's our goose painting in the sun, a hard left hand sun. But this is just to give you some ideas of how you can combine images. And again, we didn't even get into uh, using uh, the uh, specific selection. If I wanted to uh, just select this whole bottom right hand corner and then paint in a little bit more detail in it, I could do that, and I would do it on a separate layer. Then that way I could decide whether I want it or not, or even manipulate that further adjustment on that particular layer. And then again, if I want to go in and, and define uh, some of the boulders even more, just like I did the, the geese, I could take it as far as I want or stop anywhere I want. In fact, let's actually do that. What we'll do is go back to our clone source, and then now what we do is we have to pick out our background and then we will work on it. So if I go back in and just say, for example, because this boulder is in the foreground, if I want to add some detail to it, I can even just stay on clone source. I'll use my same brush that I used. And, and what I'm doing now is just putting some detail back in 
real subtle, just touching it here and there. And what it will do is then give me more detail. Like say, for example, I want to bring the top of this pine tree back out just a little bit more. And I could dust over certain areas that will bring back some of the strong textures of all the leaves. And then if I, this kind of looks almost even foggy down in here. But these pine trees right here, if I want to bring some of them back, I could just dust over it real lightly. If I want to bring some of the sky back and get rid of some of that green over paint, I could do that. And then same thing with this one here. And it's going to define it quite a bit. Now again, if I wanted to experiment with something like this, do this on a separate layer and then just turn off the layer if I think it's too detailed. But again, as long as you work on layers, you'll always leave yourself choices. There's the trunk pretty sharp there. And then if I want to add some of the details to some of these azalea bushes right here in the foreground, I could either bring back the photograph or just go to a, a, a smaller brush and keep it going in specific areas or just leave it go over the entire painting but this will make it look like it has detail in specific areas and again it would be wherever i want to create focal points throughout the painting and i'm just dusting over a little bit of everything here just to give you a rough idea how this would work uh, we do this boulder here we could put a harder straighter edge on it and then define this hard edge here of where the contrast of the deciduous trees and pine trees really come out pretty good let's see what that looks like that's yeah, a little different what I did was bring back the pine tree just a little bit but it still has that painterly look and the sky definitely has a painterly look and then I brought a little wee bit more stronger texture and detail into the foreground azaleas but that would be it and again since the geese are on their own layer I could go back in and change those around any way I want but for now if I would consider this a homemade AI painting of, of a background with five separate cutout geese on top of it. It is just to give you an idea of what you could do in the auto painting system to just give you a start of how you could lay out a painting of your own photographs or even just to give yourself a rough idea of what one of your photographs could look like if it was painted. So that wraps up this demo. And as I always say, until I see you out in the field or back at the studio, thanks for watching.